All right. I will not force you all to ignore the obvious. Do you notice something different about me today? Makeup, hair. Yes, for any new guests who are joining us, the context is I usually dress pretty casually. But the biggest change is I don't normally wear makeup. And I want to show you why, because this face took me half an hour and all these products and all these tools, our favorite. Let me speed things up a bit. Oh, and I can't forget eyebrow and upper lip wax. Oh, and my least favorite part, taking off the makeup. So this face probably takes me actually more like 40 minutes. And I am a very lazy and impatient woman who likes to sleep in, so I don't wear makeup. But other women do. A lot of other women do. Would anyone like to guess how big the cosmetics industry is? It's $460 billion, and that was three years ago. And let's say you spend 30 minutes a day on makeup. Over a year, that's one week, seven days of your time over your lifetime that's 14 months just imagine over a year of sitting at this table so why do women do this it's because it matters one study shows that participants were more likely to award prestigious jobs to women who were made up than to the same women when their faces were unadorned another study found that Subtle makeup made women seem more competent, likable, and attractive. And even though modern makeup is relatively new, maybe 100 years old, it's common enough that it's reset expectations of what we look like. I caught myself doing this once. I thought one of my coworkers looked more tired than normal until I realized she just wasn't wearing makeup that day. And every day, this makeup tax is what women pay in their time and in their money to make up the difference between reality and expectation. And as we just heard, the costs are even higher for women who choose not to pay that tax. So I wanted to know, is there anything we can do about this? For one, we could all stop wearing makeup a few days a week. But the more I think about it, the resetting has to come from influencers like movies, celebrities, advertising, and I don't see that happening very quickly. Alternatively, we could expect men to wear makeup. At least we could spend our 14 months at the table together. But in all seriousness, it's a difficult question to answer. Even one of our most prominent female figures didn't have a reply for this. Two years ago, Hillary Clinton was asked about the makeup tax. How does she deal with the obligation of getting ready each morning while getting ready for the real work of the day? She didn't quite answer. She said, Amen, sister. You're preaching to the choir. It's a daily challenge. I do the best I can, and as you may have noticed, some days are better than others. But while reading up on this story, I learned Clinton was forced to an answer several decades ago. Some of you might know this Hillary. She used to be a makeup-free, giant glasses-wearing woman with mousy brown hair who kept her maiden name. But after her husband Bill lost a 1980 re-election campaign, she changed her look. She got contact lenses, started blowing out her hair, she changed her name. The lawyer Hillary Rodham became Hillary Rodham Clinton, and Bill Clinton won his next election. When someone makes a big change like this, I know she has big opinions on the matter and I wanted to hear them. But I also know the blunt, sometimes fiery answers she used to give disappeared along with her giant glasses. After years of nitpicking and out of context quotes, her public response style became a lot like her appearance, calculated, cautious, carefully worded. As for me, I was resigning myself to wearing light makeup at the office, especially with science backing up my personal suspicions that yes, I would be taken more seriously. 
But then the speech brought me a couple inspirations. Clinton dodged the makeup question two years ago, but she has a different answer lately. She's posing for makeup-free photos with fans, performing a speech last November with minimal makeup. And these are not mistakes. These are conscious decisions. And I appreciate a woman showing her original face again after so many years. And it also made me think maybe there are other ways to work on my appearance. For example, I don't need 30 minutes to maintain a few wardrobe staples, a statement shoe, and some funky hair. And for me, these are fun and low maintenance ways to invest in my look. And these photos also finally helped me decide that day to day, I should continue to represent the makeup free look. For the record, I feel extremely ironic pointing to this face while I'm saying that, but I hope some of you will join me for no makeup days after today. And most importantly, I hope all of us think twice when we see someone who looks tired or old, when we see a celebrity without makeup, rather than, whoa, she's letting things slip. Instead, we will recognize that artificial gap and see, yep, that's what we all look like. And none of us should feel the need to make up that difference.